My name is Mike Kay from Lumen Dynamics, and we're going to talk today a little bit about UV spot curing uh, for the assembly of medical devices. I thought we'd start, I'll uh, give you just a quick background as to who we are as a company in Lumen Dynamics. Uh, we actually started as EFOS uh, back in 1984, so we've been manufacturing UV spot curing systems for nearly 30 years. Uh, we were purchased by Expo uh, back in 2001. And then just recently, uh, October 2010, we were acquired by the Riverside Company and changed our name to uh, Luma Dynamics. So we manufacture the Omnicure line of UV spot curing systems. Uh, we have offices globally. And at this point, we estimate we have probably about 15,000 UV spot curing systems uh, in use in assembly processes globally. We offer both lamp and LED-based uh, UV spot curing technology. And this is something we'll, we'll get into in quite a bit more detail throughout the presentation, really trying to look at the, uh, the benefits of uh, using either one of these technologies. Typical applications from a medical device standpoint include things like balloon catheters, ablation catheters, uh, syringes, anesthesia masks, blood bags, There's many applications within medical device. Uh, so a quick look at the, the products that we do offer uh, for medical device uh, manufacturing. Uh, our lamp-based system is called the Omnicure 2000. So this uses a 200-watt mercury lamp. Uh, it includes a dichroic reflector. And what the dichroic reflector does is it, it basically eliminates the infrared energy from the lamp. So it allows for reduced heat uh, when you're curing your parts together. It's got about 3,000 hour typical lifetime. And a, and a peak of radiance of about 30 watts per square centimeter. Now you can adjust that output in 1% increments. And one of the, the real unique features we have within the Omnicure 2000 is what we call closed loop feedback technology. And what that does is, is with a, any arc lamp, it's gonna degrade over time. So the closed loop feedback will automatically monitor the output from your system and then make any adjustments to the output in order to maintain a very steady irradiance level. So that allows you to have a very repeatable process because you know you're always going to have a very repeatable irradiance coming from the system. The system uh, is automation friendly, so it can be run through uh, an automated system or it can be run manually. And we also have five different filter selections available. And again, the filters can be used to further reduce the spectral content of the system. And that, again, can be very helpful in reducing the amount of heat. So if you have a very heat sensitive process, you uh, may want to use a specific filter, reduce the spectral content of the system. As far as the LED system goes, we have what's called the uh, LX400 system. Now LEDs, much longer lifetime, typical about uh, 20,000 hour from life. Uh, a peak of radiance of about nine and a half watts per square centimeter. Uh, although it is in a limited spot size, and so in this case, nine and a half watts is typically in about two to three millimeter spot. Uh, with the system, you do have independent control of up to four different heads. You can again adjust the output in 1% increments. Uh, and something that we provided with our systems, we have three different wavelengths available. So we have 365 nanometers, 385 nanometers, and 400 nanometers. And what we, you'll see as we go is this provides you with a little bit more flexibility in selecting the, the wavelength to match up to the adhesives that you want to use. So a little bit more flexibility by offering uh, more wavelengths. We also have multiple lens systems or lens accessories that are available which really allows you to maximize the output on your part depending on the, the spot size that you require and also the working distance of your process. Uh, just recently launched, uh, just launched at the show really, is the new Omnicure LED light meter which now provides uh, a radiometer for you to accurately measure the uh, irradiance and power coming from your LED system in a radiometer that's been calibrated traceable to NIST. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. And, and finally, the third product we have that uh, we see as, as being used for medical devices is what we call our LED light line. So in this system, instead of having a very small spot of light, you now have a three inch wide beam. Again, LED based, so it's, it's 20,000 hour lifetime. Uh, output is adjustable in 1% increments. Uh, this particular system is available 365 and 400 nanometers. It's got a nice high peak irradiance uh, along this three uh, inch wide beam. So it's ideal for conveyor type applications where you're moving parts underneath the light sources uh, for small plastic parts, coatings, things like that. I thought before we, we went too much further, it'd be interesting to have a look at the current state 
uh, of adoption of LED technology. Now, lamp technology has been around uh, since our company started in 1984, very well established. LED is, is a much more recent technology. Uh, it's been around for about 10 years, although really only the last five years or so where it started to, to get to a level where it's, it's really usable uh, for spot carrying systems. So if we look at, at the chart here, what we see is, is last year, about 40% of the UV spot carrying systems sold globally were LED-based systems. So it's a pretty good adoption that has taken place over the last few years uh, in, in really switching over to LED-based technology. However, if we look specifically at medical device assembly, we see it's, it's really less than 10% adoption in medical device. And I find it interesting because LED is actually quite a nice fit for medical device manufacturing. Uh, it's very good at low temperature curing, which is ideal with uh, assembly of plastic parts, as you can see in medical device. And it's also a very good fit for the free radical adhesives that are, that are really very commonly used uh, in medical device assembly. Certainly one of the things we're aware of is, is there's a very high cost in changing anything within a medical device uh, assembly process. So there's a, a difficult justification to make to switch from a lamp to an LED. And we understand that that's, that's part of the reason that is, is limiting the adoption. The other being the, the lack of a, an accurate radiometer, which is again something we think is, is being addressed uh, recently with some, some new product lines. So really what we're seeing at this point is LED systems, in medical at least, really being purchased for R&D uh, requirements, for, uh, for testing, or for new processes. Um, so at this point, we have the benefit of actually looking at other markets who've been using LEDs uh, for a number of years now and have really made the transition quicker than medical. And we can look at some of perhaps the pitfalls that they've run into in making that transition and hopefully avoid those within the medical device. So it's actually, we're in a good position to, to look back over the last few years and really gain some uh, advice from things that they have done. And certainly it's something that uh, we are asked quite often at this point, is customers looking at transitioning from their lamps to their LED systems, and they want to know which one is going to work best for them. So what I thought we would do is, is moving forward, we'll, we'll have a look at the different systems, the different technologies, and we'll compare different features in each, and really hopefully give you a better idea of which technology may be better suited for your application. So things we'll look at are, are things like lamp life, environmental factors, something that's becoming much more important when you're establishing any assembly process. The curing factors, how well does each technology actually cure the adhesive? Uh, I mean, that's the, the bottom line when you want to uh, assemble your products. And radiometry. And we'll have a look and, and hopefully go through and give you a, a better idea of which technology may be best suited for you. So as I mentioned, when we look at lamp life, this curve here shows the typical lamp life of an arc-based, uh, lamp-based system. It's got about a typical 3,000 hour lifetime. And you can see that the fastest degradation comes over the first 500 hours. So this is about 20% of its total output in the first 500 hours. So it's not bad lifetime from the lamps, but not great. When you compare that to an LED system, you get a typical lifetime of 20,000 hours. Much longer, it's gonna save you a lot of uh, running cost when you establish a process you're no longer having to replace your lamps on a six month or yearly basis. One thing I, I would like to point out though is that there's still about a 10% degradation in LEDs over the first 500 hours. Certainly one of the misconceptions we've seen over the previous years is people thinking that LEDs have no degradation over time and that's just not the case. Really depending on how, on the system specifically, there is degradation. So it's still very important that you're monitoring the output of your LED system. When we look at now environmental factors, and UV curing is actually considered a green technology because the chemistry being used, uh, there's lower solvent content, lower VOC content, than other adhesive technologies. Uh, and it's also becoming more and more important for companies who are taking a, a stand to protect the environment with their assembly process. So LED has definite advantages in environmental. Uh, LEDs are mercury free versus the, the mercury arc, arc, uh, arc lamps. They use about 80% less electrical power versus a, a lamp-based system, and there's no consumable items. So as far as environmentally goes, uh, LEDs have a definite advantage. Now we're gonna look at the actual light cure factors or, or, or the factors of the UV spot curing system as it's gonna cure the adhesive. So the, the four conditions which will affect the final cured properties of an adhesive are the exposure duration, the irradiance level, 
the spectral content, and heat. Now, the first three factors are things that can be directly controlled by the spark carrying system. Heat is a, is a byproduct of the reaction, but again, it's very important that the heat be managed within your process in order for you to have a successful assembly of your parts. And it is important because we have seen many times uh, through our testing that the same adhesive, if you use a different curing process, if you use a different irradiance level, you can actually get different physical properties from that adhesive, different bond strength, uh, different moisture resistance or flexibility. So it's important that you establish a process where you understand these different factors and then you maintain them in order to maintain a very repeatable process. So first thing, if we look at a radiance power uh, from a system, lamps have a, a, a very definite advantage here over the LEDs. Uh, a lamp system, you get about 30 watts per square centimeter versus an LED where it's about nine and a half. The lamps, you can, you can cover a spot about 10 to 12 millimeters in diameter uh, versus an LED, an LED system, you're limited to about four millimeter spot sizes. Oh, one of the areas where LEDs uh, sort of mitigate this advantage is if you're using uh, multiple cure sites. With an LED system, you're using multiple heads each head will still maintain that maximum of nine and a half watts per square centimeter. With a lamp system to get multiple cure sites, you're adding legs to your light guide. And as you add legs, you reduce the total output from each leg uh, as you add them. So there's, there's one area where the LEDs do have a, a bit of an advantage.